Good morning, everyone. Thank you for, for joining today. Uh, my name is Sumit Puri. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Liquid. And today we're here to give you an overview of our composable infrastructure technology. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the market segments. We'll talk a little bit about the use case. Uh, we'll show you the physical layer and how, inter things, how things interconnect. Um, and our main purpose today is to educate you on the art of the possible. So with that, I'll start with a little bit of why we are doing this. Um, the fundamental issue that we are trying to address inside the data center is the tremendous amount of waste. Waste in the sense of underutilization, waste in the sense of servers that are sitting idle, waste in the sense of over-provisioned machines that are not using the most of the infrastructure that are deployed inside of them. Um, we think a lot of that has to do with the fact that these servers are statically configured. We think with new technologies like the ones that Liquid is deploying, uh, we're able to number one, change the utilization rates of the very expensive, very power hungry hardware that we're deploying in our data center. And in turn, we think this has a direct impact on cost. And so we think by moving to a dynamic infrastructure environment, we think we have the ability to change the cost of what it takes to deploy this, these very expensive assets inside our environment. That's what we're here to educate you on today is what is possible when we begin to deploy dynamic infrastructure leveraging software defined technologies. Uh, this is the one marketing slide we like to talk about. Um, this slide is particularly from Gartner and it talks about the data center roadmap. Where were we, where are we, where are we headed? The key points we like to take about, take, I like to point out in this, in this slide is number one, um, statically configured infrastructure is not the future. The future is gonna be very much around dynamically configuring your infrastructure to best match the workload that we're looking to deploy inside of our environment. We think the software defined autonomous data center of the future is where we are headed. And in order to get to that autonomous software defined data center, there's going to be two fundamental technologies that are required. Number one is the disaggregation of hardware. And then number two is really intelligent software that takes pools of disaggregated hardware and reconnects them or composes them back into physical servers. Um, we think the easier way to actually think about this is legacy servers versus dynamic servers. In a legacy server, it's really easily understood. We take devices, whether it's a storage device, a networking device, these days, a lot of GPU devices, and we plug them directly into the sockets of the motherboard. And that's how we configure what we want our machine to look like. And if we want to change that, normally we're sending a human down to the data center with a cart and a screwdriver, and we're manually moving these things around. In a disaggregated architecture, we take a different approach. Think about pools of resources, pools of compute, pools of storage. These days, as I mentioned, lots of pools of accelerators. Instead of plugging them directly into a switch, we plug that instead of plugging them directly into a motherboard, we plug them into a switch. And then we come in with software and we dynamically configure at the bare metal what we want our machine to look like. Take this one new pizza box, attach four storage devices, attach 12 of those GPUs. The server thinks these are bare metal devices, but as the workload changes and evolves, we can evolve the infrastructure to best match the workload. So if we need to add another GPU to that server for an AI centric workload, we're not sending a human down to the data center. We are reprogramming the fabric and add or adding or removing devices from the server, depending on what the workload requires. That's how we define a disaggregated architecture and Liquid is, is focused on delivering number one, the technology that enables hardware disaggregation and more importantly, the software that allows you to recompose into servers. When we take this approach of agile infrastructure, there's a lot of different benefits that, that, that come inside the data center. Today, our primary use case is around accelerators, around GPUs, around AI-centric workloads. And so when we take a disaggregated approach to the data center, number one is we're able to achieve higher density, whether that's higher GPUs per node, higher GPUs per rack, more GPUs per application, we're able to do more. We're able to increase density. We're able to increase GPU density. We're able to increase performance density. So that is one of the benefits that we're able to achieve in a, in a disaggregated architecture. We can get more GPUs into the environment and build bigger nodes that can run faster. The second thing is agility. We can scale better. We can scale more efficiently. 
If we need to add trays of accelerators to our environment, we can add just trays of accelerators without paying for more compute, without paying for more storage. We can scale the resources independently. We can decouple our purchasing decisions. If I wanna buy a one use server and decide I wanna attach 20 GPUs to it, we can enable that configuration. We're not forced to buy more compute every time we wanna buy more accelerators. It's a way, it's a more efficient way of not only provisioning, but it's a more efficient way of actually scaling our data center. And then it's about efficiency. That, that at the end of the day is what our technology is providing. We're providing a more efficient platform. If we can take the utilization rates of GPUs that are sitting at 20% and move those devices around the different compute elements that could best utilize them and get 40, 60, 70% utilization out of those same GPUs, we believe there's a direct impact on infrastructure costs. We think we can shrink footprint. We think we can shrink the power and cooling profile. We actually think there's actually an improvement on software licensing efficiency. And we'll talk about that here coming up, how our integration into VMware actually has a direct impact on the amount of software that we deploy in our environment and the, and the cost and the efficiency related to that. We could spend a lot of time here talking about the different benefits of agile infrastructure. I think it's important to understand where, where is it being deployed and where are we winning? And so there's a handful of use cases that, that we're finding a home for our solution. One use case is around HPC, high performance computing. These are very, very large systems with large quantities of, of accelerators, you know, a lot of infrastructure in these environments. And if we think about HPC, it's not a single workload. We're not running a single workload on that large machine. It's different researchers bringing different workloads to the system. Different workloads require different hardware profiles. In our world, what we can do is we can study the workload on the inbound, spin up our t-shirt size, small, medium, large, whatever we need, get the work done. And as soon as that server doesn't need that resource anymore, we can free it out back into the environment and let somebody else have it, that hardware. There's a lot of enterprises that continue to own and operate their own cloud. Financial services, for example. Not everything is going to Amazon, you know, contrary to popular belief. We think a good amount of the workloads for many reasons will remain on-prem. And there's gonna be a lot of enterprises that will continue to own and operate their own clouds. And so for those enterprises that wanna own and operate their own cloud, we provide flexibility, we provide agility, we provide cloud-like capability, but we provide it for the infrastructure that our, that our customers own. Media and entertainment, they consume large quantities of accelerators, they consume large quantities of high-performance storage. That's an area where, where we fit really well. And so whether it's classical you know, shooting videos or gaming development, um, there's a natural fit for accelerators in those environments. And, and we have a really good platform for deploying those accelerators. Edge is an important one. We think you know, Edge might be one of, the, you know, one of the bigger opportunities out there. All of the data is actually created at the Edge. Um, all of the cameras, all of the sensors, that's where all of the data is being generated. It's very difficult and actually very expensive to forklift all of that data, move it to the core data center, run an algorithm to make some decision on it, and then give the answer back out to the device at the edge. Inevitably, our opinion is, you know, the compute, the GPUs, the infrastructure finds its way closer to the data. And that means GPUs at the edge. And, you know, what is the edge limited by? Edge is limited by floor space. It's limited by power. It's limited by cooling. It's limited by human access. These are the problems we are solving with a dynamic infrastructure platform. We can take those GPUs that are 20% utilized, we can move them around into any server that needs them and get 40, 60, 70% utilization and therefore do with one rack of infrastructure what previously used to take two racks of infrastructure to do. And we can shrink that edge footprint. And by the way, when a piece of hardware breaks at the edge, we don't have to send a human to go fix it. We can remotely reconfigure the infrastructure. And we think there's a natural pairing here between virtualization and, and hardware disaggregation. We have integration into things like VMware. We work closely with you know, the Nutanix platform. And so there's a natural benefit around integrating you know, the hypervisor under dynamic infrastructure and giving the hypervisor more capability to reconfigure the physical infrastructure that lives underneath it. 
we'll talk about that a little more when we show our, our VMware integration. But there's a lot of you know, different areas where our solution fits, but the one common theme amongst all of these different verticals is the fact that majority of the people that are deploying our solution are doing something with GPUs, are doing something with accelerators. So that's the horizontal workload that cuts across all of these verticals is most of our customers are trying to solve a GPU problem. And most of them are not trying to figure out is static better or is dynamic better? I think you know everyone understands dynamically configurable to best match the workload being deployed is a better answer than statically configured hardware. I think majority of our customers are trying to figure out where are they gonna run their AI workload? Are they gonna run their AI workload on Amazon and, and just give all of their money to the public cloud providers? Or are they going to own their own infrastructure to run these high value workloads? With the liquid offering, as I mentioned, we can not only give them the agility and flexibility that they would have gotten on public cloud, we can actually give them much higher levels of performance and save them a lot of money doing it also. And so this is you know, where we see a really important thing happening. We think these next generation AI workloads are very important. We think things like generative AI are the next killer you know, applications that our customers are gonna be deploying. And we think there has to be a more economical way of, of approaching this. And so at the heart of what we are trying to do, we are trying to change the economics of how we deploy these accelerators. And so whether we're talking about machine learning, deep learning, data inference, generative AI, natural language processing, we think the next generation workloads are GPU centric. We don't think it's going to be an x86 centric world any longer. And we think the world is shifting to these high value workloads. And so if we're trying to build an environment where we can scale GPUs, if we're trying to build an environment where we can share these devices amongst different compute nodes, if we're trying to build an environment where we build the fastest AI nodes on the planet, or if we're trying to save money, which is I think at the heart of what we are trying to do, we have the right answer. We have the right platform for deploying these accelerators. For scaling, sharing, performing, and, and I say it often to my team is, if we weren't changing the economics, I, I don't think we would be successful. And so we think it's moving to an AI-centric world and we have to find better ways to solve these problems. Today, our number one use case is around what we refer to as GPU on demand. The old way of doing it is I plug GPUs directly into servers and I'm limited on scalability. I'm limited on flexibility. I'm limited on utilization of those devices. It's very rigid and firm and static. In our world, the way we approach it is a pool of resources. And with that pooling approach, we can get higher density per either GP per compute node or per rack. We can deploy and scale very rapidly. And fundamentally, we can change the utilization of these devices, which is gonna change the economics. Um, we say this internally you know, quite a bit. When we invented virtualization and we figured out how to share compute, we fundamentally changed the way compute was consumed. When we invented SANS and we figured out how to put storage on the network and figured out how to share storage, we fundamentally changed the way storage was consumed. Our belief strongly is when we make GPUs a shareable resource and we're able to increase the utilization of these devices and change the economics of the way customers consume them, we think this is going to be the way that people are fundamentally gonna do this going forward. So today, our number one use case is around serving GPUs to, server, to servers in cloud environments. This is probably the easiest use case for us to kind of explain and share. Um, we have a media and entertainment customer and even media and entertainment customers are doing AI. And so what this particular customer does is during the day, they take those GPUs and they give them to their AI engineers and their AI engineers use them from you know, morning till night. And when those engineers go home in the evening and those devices are not used that night by the AI team, the customer sets a policy and they automatically reprogram the fabric and they move those accelerators into the video rendering pool. 
And so now they've taken a very expensive pool of assets and figured out how to double the utilization of it by putting a policy in place related to time of day. And fundamentally, the only other way they were gonna solve this problem was to buy two. And so this again explains and shows how we can change the economics of deploying these accelerators. HPC is a, a big important market. There's a natural convergence happening between AI and HPC. Um, if you listen to you know, our partners like NVIDIA, what they're saying is these two things will merge, right? AI and HPC will become you know, one, one workload in essence, right? And so today we have a very interesting platform for HPC and we've done some very, very large deployments um, around dynamic GPU allocation in HPC environments. You know, think 100,000 cores, six, 700 GPUs, all in a composable environment where we have integration into orchestration frameworks like Slurm. And so in our world, the user can put into Slurm the exact infrastructure that they're requesting. They can say, give me 12 compute nodes with three GPUs apiece. The old model is you request that of the orchestration layer and it will do a best match scenario. So if the best match that I have to that is a bunch of you know eight-way servers where I have eight GPUs per server, as the user, I can make a decision. Do I wanna run my workload and waste a bunch of infrastructure or do I wanna wait until some better infrastructure shows up that matches my requirement? In our environment, we put in what we want 11 servers with three GPUs a piece. The fabric layer goes off and creates those bare metal servers in a matter of seconds, and then gives it back to the Slurm orchestration layer with the exact hardware that it requested. Slurm can't tell that those servers are composed. It thinks it just got a bunch of static servers with the exact hardware profile that it had requested. Again, back to optimizing the utilization rate, because if we take this approach, then when the next job comes into that HPC environment, in theory, there should be more free GPUs that we can address for that next workload. I think AI is, you know, eating the world. Um, you know, it's it's real now with the applications like Chat GPT that are coming out, generative AI workloads that are coming out. I think people are now fully starting to understand how important this vertical actually is. And, but when we think about AI, many times we think about it as a single workload and that's not what it is. It is a workflow, right? There are steps we take through the AI process to achieve some outcome at the end. The first step of this process is data ingest. Well, we, need, we actually need a lot of networking for that. Um, the next step is actually cleaning, tagging, scrubbing of the data. And that's actually a CPU intensive activity. Then we move on to data training. This is where we need our big eight-way GPU systems, 16-way GPU systems, the bigger the better, so that we can reduce our training times. And then we move on to data inference, which is a implementation of what I learned during training, but yet it's a completely different hardware profile. It's like a single NVIDIA T4 GPU, for example, right? And at the center of this sits data, large, large quantities of data, petabytes of data, and many times we're shuffling the data between four different physical machines, depending on which phase of the AI workflow we're trying to accomplish. Liquid takes a different approach, right? We put the data at the center of the universe. Data has gravity. Let's bring the networking to the data. Let's bring the compute to the data. Let's bring the GPUs to the data. And so here's an example of the kinds of AI pods that we are developing and delivering to the market today. So in this example, we have four standard servers, but instead of putting the expensive GPUs, a bunch of extra storage, a bunch of extra networking capability inside of these servers, we put all of those resources into this free pool. So when server number one needs to do the data ingest thing, great. We'll go and grab a couple of networking cards connected to server number one and enhances data ingest capability. When server number three needs to do that machine learning algorithm, Great, we'll go grab four of the A100s, connect them to server number three. It thinks that those are local devices on his motherboard. It runs its machine learning algorithm. And when it doesn't need those devices anymore, we can free that back out into the free pool and let one of the other servers inside the pod have at that very expensive resource. 
number one, this is how we maximize utilization of very expensive hardware. And number two, this is actually how we deliver the solution out to market. We're not believers in throwing switches and software over the fence. Everything that we do is focused on a validated configuration um, that ensures success. And I'll walk you through some of the standardized topologies that, that are available here. But this is how we approach it. And this is an example of an AI workflow delivered on top of a dynamically composable pod. I'll walk you through next the physical layer. We'll talk about some um, performance uh, and then we'll show you a little bit more on the software. Let, let me walk through the physical layer, show you the building blocks, um, explain to you how things interconnect. Um, and then we'll show you the performance that we're able to achieve out of this level of architecture. So the first building block is our liquid matrix software. This is the software that does the orchestration and composability. The next building block we have is our EX4400 expansion chassis. This is a 10 slot PCIe expansion chassis. This is where we deploy the GPUs and other devices. Um, it's not a server, it is just a PCIe expansion chassis that, that houses external PCIe elements. And then the last building block is our PCIe fabric switch that allows you to scale multiples of these devices and servers into a larger topology. It starts very simply with real simple expansion topologies that feel like this. Uh, we take a host bus adapter, plug it into the PCIe socket of the server, connect it into one of our expansion trays, and in this example, I'm able to give a server 10 or 20 GPUs. As far as the operating system on that server is concerned, it can't tell that these devices are disaggregated. It thinks that those devices are locally plugged on his motherboard. Um, Liquid doesn't put any drivers, any hypervisors, any software modules on that compute element. It is our customer's compute element they can run any operating system they want. They can run any application they want. Our guarantee is if that application worked on a statically configured server, we will guarantee that that application will work on a disaggregated composed server code unchanged. Then we build more complex topologies. Here, here's one of our extra large pods where we're able to take 16 of our servers and connect it to one or more of our expansion trays. And this example, we are doing dynamic capability, dynamic assigning of GPUs to, to, to servers. And when we say dynamic, we are actually talking about hot adding and hot removing devices from running machines. So I can say, take two, three, four, eight of these GPUs that are sitting in this expansion pool, hot plug them into server number two, use that configuration for a day, a minute, an hour, a week, a year, however long that connection is needed. And when that interconnect is no longer needed to that server, we can reprogram the fabric, hot unplug these GPUs and either move them to a different server or move them back into the resource pool to save for another application. And then from here, we build larger topologies. And so we can have you know up to 30 GPUs in a pool uh, connecting up to 16 servers. And so if we need to go build our Ferrari configuration to go do our, you know, next gen generative AI workload, we can do that. We can take one of these servers to that server. We can connect 16 or 20 GPUs. We can connect eight or 16 networking cards. We can take, you know, half a petabyte of storage if that's what we need, connect it all to this compute element. It will run at line rate as fast as if those devices were directly in the box. And when that AI configuration for generative AI is no longer needed, we can reprogram the fabric, move those GPUs to other servers, again, in an attempt to maximize the utilization rate, very expensive, very power hungry hardware. So these are our <clears throat> liquid smart stacks. Um, as mentioned, you know, we believe the best way to deliver the solution to market is through validated configurations. Um, we are approaching this through a 10 slot, a 20 slot, a 30 slot configuration and an extra large configuration that allows for 30 GPUs and a larger quantity of hosts. These are all validated. These are all tested. These are all available through our OEM partners. Um, the only thing a customer needs to add or our partners need to add to this 
is the GPUs that live inside of them and the servers that are attached to them. Liquid has a very robust HCL or hardware compatibility list that explains exactly what servers um, can be attached to this and exactly what devices have been tested in these pods. Um, these are fully validated configurations and all the specs are available online um, at liquid.com. So please learn more about the Liquid Smart Stacks. This is, this is actually how we are delivering these solutions um, to our end users. One of the questions we often get asked with our solution is around performance. Um, it's great that we can attach a large quantity of GPUs uh, to a compute node, but how does it perform? Here's an example of us composing 20 GPUs to a traditional one U server. And what you can see here is very, very linear scaling on performance. Because we're doing this all over a native PCIe fabric and our fabric latency is a hundred nanoseconds, we tend to get number one, very high performance and number two, very linear scaling as we scale up the number of accelerators. As I mentioned earlier, we don't have any drivers, any software modules, any hypervisors that we need to load onto the compute node. It is our customer's compute node. We are application layer agnostic and we are OS level agnostic. Here's an example of legacy windows um, being loaded onto the system. And we are showing 20 GPUs showing up under device manager. And again, no special drivers have been you know, required to make this happen. If we were to decompose or disconnect these GPUs from that server, and we were to do a refresh, you would see those devices disappear from device manager. So no software drivers required um, for our implementation here over PCIe. This data was actually taken by one of our, our OEM partners, um, and they wanted to measure what the performance of the accelerators were inside of a server, statically configured, versus composed or disaggregated outside the box. The orange bar on the screen here is a composed GPU, and the blue bar is a static GPU. The, the key takeaway on this is the performance is the same. By disaggregating the GPUs, there is no measurable performance loss, and it comes back to the fact that we're, we're 100 nanoseconds per hop latency on our solution, so at the application layer, you cannot detect that the GPUs are disaggregated. A lot of times we get asked around cost, right? What, what, what is the cost of disaggregating the architecture? And I, I like to answer that two ways, right? And so my first response always is, what is the cost of not doing it? What, what is the cost of leaving our accelerators at 20% utilization? And so I think that needs to be thought through. And we have a very sophisticated, easy to use uh, TCO calculator that helps our customers understand the cost implications of disaggregating their data center. A lot of it focused on utilization. There's another way to look at cost, which is even simpler. And so this is a real world example where we had a customer who needed to deploy you know, a large quantity of accelerators. A hundred GPUs is what they needed to deploy in their environment. The traditional way of doing that was they were gonna put four accelerators in every server, and therefore to get to hundred GPUs, they had to deploy 25 servers. We showed them the art of the possible and showed them that you have a GPU problem, you don't have a compute problem, right? What if we could take the ratio from four GPUs to server to 20 GPUs per server by disaggregating and using our fabric technology. Well, in that scenario, they reduced the number of servers they needed to purchase from 25 to five. The secondary benefit was that on a platform power, not GPU power, but from a platform power, they were able to cut the power by 70% or more. And so the total TCO here for disaggregation wasn't a tax at all the customer actually ended up saving a tremendous amount of money by going to a disaggregated architecture. So not only do we provide flexibility, not only do we able, are we able to deliver performance, but as I said earlier, there's a real cost benefit to, to approaching the accelerator problem in, in a new way through a disaggregated architecture. 
we talk a lot about our performance and our capability. I think it's important for our customers to speak on our behalf also. Um, Orange is a, is a really important um, customer of Liquid and they've been a great partner of ours. Uh, this is a, a blog that they published around the world's fastest AI machine. And so they were able to take a server, um, connect 16 accelerators to that server and on their particular benchmark, this is hands down the fastest performance they were ever able to achieve. And so, you know, performance is an important part of what we do. It's not the only thing we do, um, but performance when needed, we can provide that. And when the performance is not needed, we can change the configuration dynamically, distribute those accelerators to other areas and other environments and other servers. And again, attack that utilization problem. There's three fundamental ways that we can, what we refer to pull the strings of the fabric. How do we dynamically move hardware around? Um, first and foremost, we have a very intuitive GUI at the end of this video. Uh, we will actually show you a demonstration of our GUI and it's uh, very intuitive, very simple to use, clicking, dragging of hardware to dynamically orchestrate. Everything that you will see in our GUI is built upon a REST API. Every call, every command in the GUI is mapped to a call in, inside of our REST ar architecture here. And the REST is fully open. Uh, we have a Swagger interface and our customers many times can pick up simple scripting languages like Python and start scripting the behavior of the infrastructure at 10 o'clock at night, you know, move the GPUs from server one to server two. The second thing we do with that RESTful API is we integrate more than that. We integrate into the frameworks that our customers are using today. We, we integrate into Slurm, we integrate into VMware, we integrate into Ansible, we're integrating into Kubernetes. And so there's a lot of existing frameworks that our customers are using today. And our mission is to integrate into the ones that make sense so that we can make this easy for our customers to deploy. It's a phenomenal technology and an amazing capability, but we have to also make it easy to use. And so by integrating into the tools that our customers are using today, um, we, we make this easier to use and easier to deploy. I talked about Slurm integration. This is an important one for HPC environments. Um, a lot of our HPC customers are able to drive more workloads in parallel, especially around GPU centric deployments by being able to create the exact hardware they need for the exact job that they're looking to deploy. And then being able to redeploy those resources to other jobs as and when needed. Another integration we have and we think is critically important is integration into VMware. And, you know, a lot of times we get asked, you know, now that I'm composing, do I not need to do virtualization anymore? And that's not how we view it at all. We, we view it very much as a better together story. Uh, virtualization and VMware is an amazing product and you'll get a phenomenal result if you deploy that on top of a static server. But when we can deploy the hypervisor on top of dynamic infrastructure, we get even a better result. When the hypervisor can reach down to the infrastructure and say, give me another storage device, I wanna slice and dice, give me another GPU, I got this VDI workload that I wanna take care of. We think the marriage of the two technologies is really how we're gonna to get to 100% resource utilization inside the data center. And we think there's a cost play here also. The old model is I buy a box and for example, that box has eight SSDs inside of it and I virtualize the, the eight SSDs. And when I need the ninth SSD, I buy another box and I pay more VMware licensing. In our world, we take a very different approach. When that box needs a ninth driver, a 10th driver, an 11th drive, or needs another GPU for its VDI environment, we don't pay for more VMware, we just, compose more resources under that same hypervisor. And the hypervisor can't tell that those resources are disaggregated. And so we're able to extend the useful life of the hypervisor without spending more money. And so as we can be more resource efficient for hardware, we think we can actually be more resource efficient for software also, because it's not just VMware, it's most software. If we can decouple the device from the processor, we think that there's a natural decoupling of software licensing also. Our VMware integration is, is VMware certified. It is available on the VMware website. 
and everything that you're able to do through our liquid GUI with this v vCenter plugin is also able to be achieved directly from the VMware orchestration layer. So there's three primary areas that Liquid focuses on our technology. Um, you know, our, our vision here is to deliver the, the fully dynamic data center. Today, the primary use case is very much around GPUs, um, but our vision is number one to be multi-fabric. Whether we're disaggregating the hardware over PCIe Gen 4, PCIe Gen 5, Ethernet, Finiband, soon we will have CXL. Um, Liquid is a multi-fabric orchestration layer. So depending on the physical interface we want to use, our, our goal is to be able to orchestrate across all of those. Different devices on different interfaces, different tools for different jobs. Second thing is we must deliver the full complement of endpoints, whether it's a GPU, an FPGA, a DPU, eventually disaggregated memory. We want to be able to support all of the different device types out there. And as I mentioned earlier, usability is critical. Uh, we have to make our solution seamless to integrate into the environments that our customers are using. So integration into Kubernetes, integration into VMware, integration into Slurm, integration into the bare metal operating systems that our customers are using. That's a critical area of focus for us. Um, Liquid is the leader in, in software composability and we think these are the three vectors we must continue to invest in. One of the features we support inside of our platform is hardware containers. I think software containers are well understood and it's becoming you know, the preferred way of deploying software into an environment. But in our world, even if we have 50 pieces of hardware, that hardware can be configured 200 different ways. And so we support templates or hardware containers where we can predefine the exact infrastructure that we want in our server for example, if I'm going to go run some tensor workflow, I actually know ahead of time what hardware I want. We can predefine that hardware and then with one click, launch the physical bare metal infrastructure. And then the next click, we can launch the software container that's perfectly suited for that machine. And so we think the ability to build hardware containers, uh, again, is an interesting and powerful way to go off and deploy infrastructure. Today, a lot of what our customers are doing is a user-defined environment, meaning they come in and the user says, build me a server with this much hardware, these many GPUs, um, and it's a user-defined uh, infrastructure. Um, the next evolution of this will, will very quickly move to policy-based. So when the user defines the machine uh, he or she would like, they also define the behavior of that machine. When the storage goes above 80% utilized, automatically give the server more storage. At 10 o'clock at night, when those GPUs are not going to be used, move them to the video rendering server or the blockchain environment so I can get additional work out of them. When we detect that the DRAM module on that server fails, take his storage devices and his GPUs and move them over to a spare node. There's policies for performance, policies for failure domain, policies for time of day. And so very soon we move to a policy-based world. And then eventually policy evolves into machine learning, right? Meaning that the human is now no longer setting how the policies are, are, are controlled, right? We let the machine algorithms study the usage patterns of the hardware and the environment, and we let the machines control how infrastructure is you know, reformulated. And so this is the machine building machine example. And that's, we believe, the final endpoint of how we get to our lights out autonomous data center without any human interaction. Um, that has been our explanation on uh, composable disaggregated infrastructure, our GPU on demand offering. Um, this is our liquid product portfolio. Um, in addition to our composable infrastructure solutions, Liquid also does build some very high performance IO acceleration products built around NVMe storage. And there will be a follow-up uh, presentation on, on those products, which we encourage you to watch. Thank you for your time today.